Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Yanza Battle. We all know the best part of this hobby is painting, but to get that perfect paint job, you need a perfectly built model. And stay tuned till the end to see what the EOB Complete community has been up to this week. I'm kidding around, obviously. Painting isn't everyone's favorite part. Some people like collecting, some people like complaining, and some weirdos even like gaming. The building stage is a very important and fun part of the hobby. With painting, you decide what colors the model should be, but during the building stage, you decide how the model should be. Tabletop wargaming miniatures are usually much simpler than model tank kits with dozens of parts instead of hundreds, but it still is often the most involved phase where you really make the big decisions and decide on what story the model is telling. Without further ado, I have a fresh box of plastic crack here. <laughs> Come with me as I turn this box into five awesome orcs. The first step in getting your models built is a clean workspace. So I took my finest hand broom and gave my workspace a nice sweepity sweep. Some things to know right off the bat, it's pretty simple. This is the model's frame, better known as a sprue, and everything else are the model's parts or bits. Then you need to assemble your tools. The most important tool is the hobby knife. The number 11 blade is the one you want, but I also find uses for the number 18 chisel as well. It's super important to work with fresh blades. Paradoxically, a dull blade is a dangerous blade. I would say every new box of models should get a fresh blade. Next, you will need a clippers. These go by many different names. Flush wire cutters, pointed side cutters, flush nippers, micro shears. But they're all invaluable. You can gouge the models off the sprue with a knife, but you will quickly find that once you go nippers, you never go back. After that, you need some glue. Super glue is a go-to. It dries fast and bonds strong, but plastic glue will be the stronger choice for plastic to plastic bonds. Those three are the needs, and now for the nice-to-haves. First are files. I like to have a few nail files lying around. It is easier to use than the X-Acto, and the coarse and rough sides are a nice option. I own some real steel files too, but I don't use them that often, mostly for working with metal miniatures. After that, some gap filler putties wouldn't be a bad idea. Sometimes a model doesn't go together perfectly, and in those situations, it's nice to have a gap filling putty. Another quality of life tool is the hand drill. These are great for drilling gun barrels or pipes so that they have a more authentic hole where the pew-pews come out. And a prep list wouldn't be complete without mention of a paint handle. Not everyone likes to use a handle to hold up a mini while painting, but for a lot of people, they find it much more comfortable. There's a lot of products out there, but for me, I like to use a little cube of wood and some poster tack. So for this project, I am building some orc knobs. This is the gut ripper and gang box, but I bought it on eBay and it didn't come with the boss. So I'm just building me up some knobs. First things first, I know it's not easy, but you really should have a look through the instructions. It'll save you time, you'll get to know the kit and all of its parts, and it'll lead to fewer mistakes down the road. So the first step, according to the instructions, is to clip the bodies and legs. This is a pretty typical of infantry kits, but follow the instructions. You can get into trouble fast if you just start clipping everything. Some model parts are specifically numbered or keyed into different poses and need to be assembled together. And if you lose those numbers, it becomes a jigsaw puzzle. To clip models with the nippers, you wanna get the blades of the snips close to, but not flush. You wanna leave a little bit of the sprue so that you can go in later and use your hobby knife to carve away what is left of the sprue, leaving you with a perfectly smooth model. To carve away these nubs, just slice away what's left of the sprue with a few small passes. If the blade is resisting and not cutting easily, switch it out for a fresh one. For less important areas like the bottoms of his feet, it can be quicker and easier to just blast these areas with a few swipes of a nail file to get rid of the sprue bump. On most model kits, you'll find some mold lines. These are small raised lines of extra plastic left over from the molding process. You can feel them if you run your fingernail over the line and it's important to remove them. I find the best way is to gently scrape these areas with a hobby knife. You want to make many long and low pressure scrapes to remove the lines. If you press too hard, you'll gouge into the plastic and this can leave ugly marks. Just make lots of soft scrapes until the line disappears. If the mold line is in a convenient spot like here on the backs of these orc knobs, you can just use a nail file. Now these orcs have a nasty mold line on the inseam of their pants, but I'm not going to worry about that. If this was a hero where people were going to look at it from all angles, I would fix this, but for rank and file infantry, no one will ever notice that there's a line under his ass. Life is too short and no one will ever see it. I worked carefully cleaning every little mold line and sprue nub until everything was smooth and tidy. This made a little mess, so I went ahead and brushed my workspace clean again. You'll be surprised how fast the mess will accumulate and it'll slow you down later if you don't keep on top of it. 
Now it comes to the glue. I like Tamiya Extra Thin Cement for all my plastic to plastic bonds. It's nice and easy to use with the applicator brush and the cap. Super glue is great too, it dries in seconds and works on a lot of materials like wood, plastic, and metal. But plastic glue is stronger in the long run. For this job, I'm using some Tamiya Extra Thick Glue, which is the Tamiya Thin with some sprue thrown in. The plastic dissolves and make a paste that dries strong like the plastic glue, but is thick like super glue. I brush the glue onto one half and then press the two parts into one another. The thick plastic glue does a good job of squishing as the two halves combine and makes for a nice solid weld, even when there's not perfect part-to-part -part contact. Now I can see that there is a nasty gap between the body and the top, and I'm very tempted to fill this, but because I looked at the instructions, I know that the shoulder pads will cover a lot of this area, so I might not need to bother. I went ahead and clipped the shoulders from the sprue, and in areas where the nippers might be too bulky or too aggressive, like these little shoulders, I went in and cut them out with my hobby knife. I particularly like to use the big chisel blade for this. This lets me go in later when I have more room and control to clip these flush and then clean them with a hobby knife. I picked out my 10 shoulders from the options in the kit and then put the rest aside. I might use them later. Then I cleaned my workspace again. At this point I was still worried about that gap, so I dry fit the shoulders. This means I placed them on with no glue to see how they would fit. They do cover most of the shoulders, but there is still a little spot right behind the neck that's going to need some filling. So to fill these gaps, I broke out the Tamiya Basic Putty. I made myself some applicators using some coffee stirrers, and to give myself a nice edge, I trimmed them with a wire cutter. This stuff is great, it dries very fast. To use it, I applied some Tamiya Extra Thin Cement to the area, then spread on a little goop. I scraped away the excess and allowed it a few minutes to dry. Then I went in with a nail file and filed these areas smooth. Once this was done, it'll be like there never was a gap in the first place. To me, a basic modeling compound is lacquer based and so does have some harmful fumes that can make for not the most pleasant hobby experience. If fumes are something you worry about, you could also use a less aggressive paste like Deluxe Perfect Plastic Putty. With my gaps filled, I went ahead and glued on the shoulders with my Tamiya Extra Thick Cement. I applied a drop to both halves and then squished the parts into each other. The shoulders were all different, so I gotta flex my creative muscles by picking the shoulders I liked the best for each orc. Now, looking at the instructions again, they say to pick out the heads next, but I think I'll hold off for now. The heads I pick will probably depend on the poses and weapons I choose later. So skipping over the heads, I looked over the instructions at all the lovely weapon options and picked a few out. This is also probably a good time to check with your rules, army codex, or battle scribe to see what the hot weapons are this edition. I picked out my bits and then found them on the sprues. I clipped these out the same way I did the orc bodies and legs, leaving the little nub of the sprue remaining to be cleaned later. I painstakingly cleaned every one of those weapons so that they were all set to be glued onto the orc bodies, working slowly and carefully. This was a bit tedious, but worth it. Once again, my space was a mess, so I quickly cleaned up and got back to it. Now I have my orc bodies and their weapons, but I don't want to make any mistakes, so I'm going to test out the weapons to see if I like how they look, and to do this I will be using the magic of poster tack or blue tack. This is a mildly sticky, reusable putty that will allow me to stick on the arms and get a look at them without committing to gluing them in place. I just pull off a little bit, roll it into a ball, and then stick it in the joint. For example, on this knob, I wasn't sure which power claw I liked best, so poster tack let me see what each option looked like. I did the same thing to the rest of the boys, and this also let me see how they all look together. Here's the squad, and I wasn't quite happy with a few of them. I decided to give the boss knob a left hand power claw instead so that he could hold the last right handed chopper sword. There, that's the look I want. Now that I know 100% that I'm happy with my picks, I glued them in place, pulling off the poster tack and replacing it with more Tamiya Thick Glue. If you have any trouble pulling off the poster tack, it sticks very well to itself, so just use a bigger ball of putty to help pull away those stubborn bits. I glued the chopper swords on, but for these big two-handed saws, I'm going to hold off on gluing for now. They cover up a significant amount of the model and would make getting a paintbrush in there difficult, so it'll make painting easier if those swords were left off the model. More on that later. And for my boss knob, I wasn't completely satisfied with the range of motion for his arms, so I decided to add a little green stuff putty in between. Green stuff is a two-part epoxy resin that makes for a really nice sculpting medium. It has a long working time, and even if you're not a sculptor, you should have some of this in your hobby bin for situations like this. I started by pulling off enough putty to get the job done and kneading the two halves together. When it turns green, you're good to go. I use my hobby knife to score the areas that'll get green stuff. A little grit will help the glue and putty make a strong connection. I pulled off little balls of green stuff and super glued them into the joints. Then, after the super glue had dried fully, I carefully pressed the parts together, 
and used a silicone sculpting brush to smooth these areas out. If you don't have a silicone brush, a damp toothpick works too. Luckily, orcs are messy in general, so it's okay if you don't do a perfect job of sculpting. I just made these areas nice and smooth. Now that I have my boys and their weapons, it's time I went back and gave them some heads. Saving the heads for this point was a good move because now I know the poses and can pick heads to match. I found the heads available in the knob kit and clipped them out, but there was only a couple that I really liked. Luckily for me, I had some aftermarket bits. These orc heads are not made by Games Workshop and are instead from a company called Spellcrow. These will do great. To glue the resin heads to the plastic orcs, I need to use super glue. The plastic glue melts plastic and welds them together, but it doesn't do anything to resin. So this is why you need both. For the plastic heads, I used my Tamiya Thick Glue. This guy with his swords up really shows the benefits of waiting because he needs a screamy, yelly face, but I might have been stuck with the orc frowny face. Picking the heads that match the pose is important. Now my boys are assembled and they all have their war gear. I almost forgot about this little fella. But you know what I didn't almost forget about? Our Patreon. If you enjoy our videos, the best way to support us is by becoming a member of our Patreon. Over there, you'll get access to some behind the scenes content, voting on what models I paint live here on YouTube, as well as extra live streams every week and more. With that out of the way, let's get back to the building. These knobs are now done being built technically, but I would suggest putting on as many decorations as you can. These are what will make your models feel like yours. I went over the sprues and clipped out anything I like the look of. And this is a good point where you could also do some kit bashing. That's where you take parts from other kits and put them onto this project. With all my fun parts selected, I carefully cleaned them up and started finding spots for them to go on the minis. This was the most fun part of the build, looking at each guy, finding interesting pieces that would fit and help me tell a story. Each orc got a little something, and I think the models are much better for it. It adds some nice character. These aren't just orc knobs. They aren't even the box art knobs. They are my knobs. Wog! Now with the models done, it's time to get these bad boys ready for painting. I got out my preferred paint handles, small cubes of wood, and some poster tack. Since orcs have such big fat feet, I had no problem just super gluing them down onto the paint handles. Super glue doesn't bond plastic to wood very well, so I can just snap them off later when it's time to put them on some nice scenic bases. And speaking of basing, you've come to the right place. We have tons of unique and simple basing tutorials that you can find on our basing playlist. These three boys were easy, but these fellows with the big two-handed saws needed a little more finesse. I glued down their bodies to the paint handles, but for their saws, I wanted to paint them separately, so I pinned them instead of gluing. To do this, I took a paper clip and a drill bit the same size as the paper clip and I drilled a small hole in the saw. I attached it and made another hole on my paint handle and attached the other end of the paper clip so that the weapon was held in the same orientation that it would be if it was still attached to the model. This way I will be sure to get my lighting correct when I'm painting. The other saw didn't have a great spot for a hole, so I hid one under one of the hands and did the same paper clip trick attaching it from one saw to my painting handle. You can also attach these to their own painting handle, but I like keeping things together. This is called sub-assemblies. The big saws are now out of the way and will make painting much easier. But because I'm not gluing the swords on first, I'll have to think about gluing them on after the painting is done. So I got out more poster tack and made a few balls to stick in the connection points to keep the paint off. When the painting is done, I can peel those off and have nice clean plastic to plastic joints to glue. And I can't forget about this little fella. I gave him his own paint handle. With my arcs done, it was time for one more cleaning and you might think we were done, but not quite. There are still plenty of nice bits on those sprue, so I clipped off everything left and prepared a bits bag with the name of the kit so that if I ever want one of these parts in the future, I know where to look. You can also trade bits with other wargamers or even exchange them for fast food. Hey Nick, I'll give you my orc bits if you buy me McDonald's. I dumped all the bits into my bag and tossed the sprue in the garbage. And now my orcs are ready for paint, but I like to take a pause at this point. This is my last chance to make any changes before I put paint on, and I like to try and find that 5% I can add to really make my models perfect. For these rough and ready orcs, I decided their armor and weapons needed a little texture, so I broke back out the gap filler and took an old brush and began stippling on some grit. The gap filler will make a very subtle texture on the model, but in some areas I wanted a more extreme texture. So I got out the Vallejo Industrial Thick Mud. This is a blend of acrylic and fine sand and powders, and it'll make for a much bolder texture. I applied this sparingly on the armor and weapons over top of the gap filler paste. And last but not least, I drilled my barrels. On most wargaming models, there will be some guns that can use a barrel drilled. Even on these sword-wielding orcs, there are some pipes and exhausts that could use a little hole added for realism. So I broke out my hobby drill and my smallest drill bits and drilled those holes. And now, my knobs are perfect and ready to get primed. 
I broke out my preferred primer, Steinol Res Black Primer, and put it through the airbrush. But a rattle can like Rust-Oleum Black Primer was my go-to for years and will do the job just fine. No matter what spray you use, make sure you wear a mask for protection. I hose down my orcs and in no time, they are one step closer to paint. Now with the primer applied, you could be done, but I like to give myself a Zenithal highlight. I put a few drops of white paint or ink into my airbrush and spray the model directly from above. What this does is it gives me a basic idea of where light would fall on the model and is a map for me to follow while painting. And here are the boys. The mark of a good build job is how excited you are for the next step. You don't want these models to go into the pile of shame. And with my knobs so lovingly built, I am beyond excited to get paint on them. Well, wasn't that fun. That is every trick I know about getting your models built right. It can be tempting to just glue them up fast because you're eager to paint or eager to play, but it's worth taking your time on this. The art of miniatures is just as much about the building as the painting, and even the best paint jobs will look poopy on top of a half-assed build job. Putting together miniatures can be a fun, relaxing exercise in problem solving and decision making. This is where you make the models into your minis. With the models built and prepared for painting, the only thing left is to pick your colors and brushes and get some paint on those minis. Well folks, that's how I prep my models. Let me know in the comments if you have any special techniques, your secret sauce of model building. I hope you enjoyed the video, and now it's time to see what the EOB Complete community has been up to this week. We put out a challenge to our community to send us before and after photos of their recently finished models to be immortalized in our videos. If you want to join in the fun, you can send us a before and after photo of your painted mini to our Discord server, which can be found in the description below, or you can post it to Instagram with the hashtag EOB Complete. Without further ado, let's look at and get inspired by what folks have finished this week. A Blade Guard Veteran by Tabletop Tips. A Necron Army by Caliban Lost. A Plague Terminator by The Happy Heretic. An Orc Warrior by Arcane. An Angry Dwarf by Gavin Lad. An Astro Militarum Sentinel by Just Make Stuff. A Baby Knight by Spaghetti Wizard. A Noble Hero by Bungster. An Onagar Dunecrawler Spider by Venom San. An Old Metal Bloodthirster by Moose. A Kitbashed Orc Knight by Raykees. An Assault Centurion by Canary. A Noble Crute by Tervo Crate. A Salamander Space Marine by Eichlo's Homework, Volume 101. Captain Cinnabon the Bunny Pirate by That Polar Burrito. A Blood Angel by Big Monkey. A Trio of Inceptors by Mr. Altire. A Plague Priest Conversion by Goldie751. A Unique Space Marine by Cleveland Enterprises. A Great Vermin Lord by Model Miniatures Beast. A Diorama by War Hammered. And some Plague Marine Terrain by Alka Seltzer. Congratulations to everyone for a job well done. It's no small feat to get paint on a mini and you all should feel really proud. Nothing gets the hobby juices flowing like finishing a project and we all thank you for sharing your work, motivating us and the hobby community to paint our plastic. Thanks for sharing.